Alright, welcome to the Arrays tutorial. This is going to be part one of it. Part one, we'll just go through types of arrays and how you get to use them. So, to make an array, you can specify either to make a normal array, which is a static array, which uses these two little brackets here. So, what, it, what you're doing is you're giving it a type it's going to be, and then you give it these brackets to say it's actually going to be an array of this type. Give it a name. And then you declare that you're actually creating a new array of this type. So basically, this says that you can expect an array or an object of this type. This is when you actually tell it what the object is going to be. So to create a, if you know it's going to be in the array already, you can specify inside these braces here. Right. So I know it's an int array, so I can give it numbers one, comma two, comma three, which is going to give me three integers in that array with the values of 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Arrays start from 0, so if I were to do int r0, then I'd get number 1, because that is the number that I've assigned to part 0 of that array. So then, if I wanted to only specify how many objects are going to be in the array, I'd put the number inside of the brackets, which basically says going to be an array of integers and I'll declare it now as an array of integers that only has three in them. Okay, you can't change this dynamically, you have to recreate the array to change this. Now the same thing goes for strings, so as you see we have a string, we're declaring it as an array by putting the brackets next to it, give it a name, we say alright so this array that we just created or declared, we're now going to say that this is the actual contents of that is a new string array that contains these two strings. Alternately, if we don't know what's going to be in there, but we know there's going to be two strings, we can do it this way instead, specifying, sorry, two, number two, which means that there's going to be two strings inside of there. Now the same can be done with any classes that you've created, so this is class object that I've just created here, contains some random stuff, and I'm saying it's going to be an array of that, and I've given it a name, and I've specified that this is what's actually going to contain, which is a new array of those classes, which is going to contain two new instances of that class. Okay, And the same can be done with the, if I don't know what's going to be in it, but I know that it's going to have two of them, I can specify it here inside the brackets. Now, arrays are very efficient, but they cannot be changed and they're not very useful when you're dealing with changeable sets of data. Um, it has a set memory allocation, which means that if I were to suddenly not need two spots but only one for the rest of the duration of my program, I would still be using two spots. Right? So to get around that, there's a different thing you can do called an array list, and that uses this import here, java.util. Asterisk. And what this does is it gives you the ability to have a dynamic changeable array. So basically we use array list keyword and inside this less than symbol, we put in what type. So instead of having the type out here and then having the brackets, we have a different type of brackets with the type inside. Make sure you use its proper uh, class type. So if you see here, instead of saying int, I've said integer with a capital I. That's the same for all the types you have to use. So double instead of a lowercase d, you'll have an uppercase d. And then as with the other ones, we specify it by saying we're going to give it a new type of that. So because um, array list is in fact a class, it has to have a constructor parentheses on it. So make sure that if you are going to declare a new array list, you have to have exactly what's written at the start, plus these two parentheses here, the brackets. Because that's saying create a new instance. So make sure you do that, otherwise you run into compilation errors. And yeah, we can move on to using them in loops. So inside this loop example here, we have a couple of loops. We are using a um, iteration loop, and this one is going to be for the size of however big the int list is. Um, so this doesn't actually do anything. It's just to show that you can actually use the size of the list to go through the list and to do certain things to it. So i will always be equal to the current entries index. So whatever um, whatever the int list is currently at, that's what i will be. So if you're in uh, part, so say you have the list and you're on the second entry in it, it'll the i will be one because it starts at zero, and because all arrays start at zero as well, that is where it should be. 
Now moving on to down here, we have the um, for each variation that Java has. So this actually accesses the object directly. So instead of having um, just the index in i, i is now the actual entry itself. So for each we go each of the objects in the int list, we access it directly, so we can then change it ourselves. So if I wanted to change this into just something else, I could go i equals 10. So now whatever entry for each of them will be 10. They'll all be 10. Going through each of them and making them 10. So an important thing to note here is that if the list has a different type, you have to specify that type. So this is a string list, so I have to say s for string. Now if I wanted this s to be equal to something else, like different, they're all now equal to different. So same thing, same principle, it goes through the array, and it, for each of the entries, it'll do the same thing. Okay, that said, this is most, most useful for when you're dealing with objects and you need to access certain parts of the object, oh, but you want to do the same things to it. But if you wanted to, for instance, uh, only for a certain object, if it had the right index, do something, you'd want to use a list, uh, sorry, a loop that has a certain index va value here that you can check. So if you can check if this index is currently greater than 10, for instance, if you only wanted to do things past a certain part of the array, then you'd have to use this one, this loop here, normal loop to make sure a for loop, make sure that you are in the correct spot, because in the for each loop you do not have access to that information. If you find that you need to change a for each loop later on to a for loop, then that shouldn't be too hard either. There's nothing wrong with going back and refactoring your code and making sure that it's working properly. Okay, that'll be it for part one of the arrays, and part two will be looking at an advanced loop example on how to use it.